Imagine transforming your Power Apps into a dynamic tool with cascading dropdowns directly linked to your SharePoint list. Intrigued? In this tutorial, we'll show you how to set up the responsive dropdown that will change with each user selection and include their hyperlinks from SharePoint list. Picture this, a user selects a category from the first dropdown and instantly the second dropdown updates with relevant subcategories, each equipped with a clickable link that leads to additional resources or detailed information. Ready to make your app smarter and faster? Let's get started. For the cascading dropdowns, what I want to do is, let's say for example, I have one here and I'll select Tesla and out of the Tesla, the make, I want some models. Let's say we got the Model 3. When I click this, it should open up another web page for that Model 3. Same with the other selections here. Let's say, for example, I select BMW. This should change now. And we've got our other options for BMW. Let's select X3. It should also open up a web page for the X3. And this goes out to the website. So let's see how we can do this. And by the way, the source for the dropdowns, the make and the model and the URL where it links out is sourced from a SharePoint list. And this is what the list looks like that's already created. It's a simple list with three columns, the, the make model and the URL. But there's also going to be a special column where we need to do some sorting. Because if we want to involve our stakeholders to be able to update this, there's some unique ways where it comes to sorting. And that I'll show at the end of the video and see how we can solve that. Let's create an app from scratch. Go to create and we're going to create a blank app. And from that blank app, we're going to have a blank canvas app. So I'm going to call this cascade and uh, drop and SP. Find with the tablet, click create, and it's going to go through the motions of creating. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make a connection to that SharePoint list. So I'll go under my data. I can add it here. I can add it here. I can add it here, but I'm going to click the big red button here to add it. For my connectors, let me scroll down to SharePoint list. Click on that. Click SharePoint. If the recent sites don't show up where they match the SharePoint list here, I'm just going to paste it here and click connect. And it's going to connect to that SharePoint site. There's already a couple of SharePoint lists. And this is the one I showed earlier. Click on that, click connect. And now it's going to make a connection to that SharePoint list. So then I can use that for my control objects. Close this panel. I'm going to bring up the tree view panel so I can see things a little bit better. First thing I'm going to add is the drop down, first drop down. Go to insert, input, and click drop down. That should show up there. I'm going to call this one uh, drop down grp underscore make. Press enter. Let's move it down a little bit. And for this one, what are our items? They're going to be taken from that make column in the SharePoint list. And if you had recalled earlier, there were multiple items of the make. So Tesla showed up a couple times, BMW showed up a couple times. So we only want the distinct count of or the distinct values of that. What I need to do is I need to wrap that into a distinct uh, function formula. So I'm type distinct, distinct, and then press tab for that. Open it up. And what is my source? My source is the drop down, right? That is the name of the list, drop dash sp dash list. And you can see that it's kind of figured it out here. I'm just going to tab that to complete it. And the expression, the expression I want to take is the make. So there are a couple values to select from here. I'm just going to scroll down to make, close parentheses. And let's test this, click save, click play, and let's see if it picks up Tesla and uh, BMW and also that select, right? So it picked up all of them. So if I click on that, nothing happens. That's because we need to create our second dropdown, close that. And our second dropdown, I can go to insert and I can also search for it. I don't have to navigate for it. I just click drop and it's gonna pull it in there. Click on drop, let's pull this one down here, uh, give it a more recognizable name. We named it DRP underscore model. So this is going to be our model, which is going to pull from this. And the nice thing about creating it's, uh, another dropdown is there's some different things that you can configure here now. The settings are a little bit different. I don't even need to write it in the formula bar here. So when, when I make my selections, it's going to pick it up there. It'll write those statements. So the items that are going to be there, it's going to come from the dropdown list. And what I need, what's the value that I need from there? Well, this is the model, right? So I'm going to click on model. and that depends on when it, the, the selection of the model is going to depend on the selection here. It's going to be either Tesla or BMW. So I'll click on that depends on, and it kind of picked it up correctly. So the control that it is picking up from is this make control, but I need to pick up the make here from this value setting. Click on apply and click save, and let's play it and see if it works. So if I select Tesla, these now should give me my two values. 
or model three or model X. And you can see it doesn't do anything yet because we haven't configured that part where it needs to shoot out to that URL. But you can see if I do BMW, we do the, we get the same values here. Close that. So let's change the setting where it launches the URL. So that's going to be selecting on my second drop down, and under here go to on change. And on change, what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate the launch function. So once you make that selection here, it's going to launch that website URL. So that's going to be that third column that we saw in that list. Type launch L A U N. Press tab. Whoops. Type L E U N, press tab, open parentheses, and what is going to launch? So what's going to be the address? Well, the address is going to be coming from the selection of the model. So I'm going to take DRP, I'm going to call itself, it's going to call itself DRP underscore model, but what it's going to be, it's going to be a selected text. Click on that, and the, from the selected text, it's going to pick up the URL. So I'm going to scroll down to pick up the URL, close parentheses, let's save that, click play, and let's set this back to normal and select Tesla and Tesla. Let's go for Model X. Model X should open up here. You can see I had the, this one open up earlier. I'm gonna close that. And for here, let's go to BMW and Model 3. Select on that and the Model 3 shows up. So the URLs work. So that's the way that we can do it. Now here's some extras. So what if you didn't wanna go in so like keep on changing, select and select here. What we can do is we can create, incorporate a button to take care of that. And also, when we get to the point of where we want to give this to our stakeholders and have them go ahead and update the shared point list and take some of that off our hands, there's going to be a sorting issue, and I'll show that. So let's see how we can incorporate that button in there. It's pretty easy. So what we need to do is we need to insert a button. So click on that, and this will be our reset button. I'll just call it reset here, put it down here, and call this reset. Right, re no, not rest, reset. And for the reset button on select, what we need to do is just type in the reset the reset uh, command. Reset, and we're gonna reset uh, DRP underscore make, but we also need to reset the other control. And we'll type reset, and we're, we're gonna separate that by semicolons. That's gonna re separate the commands here. And we're gonna reset the DRP underscore model, right? And click on save, click play, and let's see if this works. If I select on Tesla, and then select on Model X. That's going to change to the Model X. And if I didn't want to move this back to select or this one back to select, just click on this reset button and they go back to the default setting. Click close. So now we're getting to the point where, you know, maybe you don't want to manage the list items. You want to be able to give this to your stakeholders and have them in a way updated. So let's say, for example, we decide to update it and they're going to update for Tesla. I'm going to edit this in a grid view and it puts it at the bottom. So I'll put Tesla and let's put in the Model S. So the Model S should show up in between here, but it, you can see that it doesn't. Model S and for the Model S, we're going to get the website address and that's going to be, let me, let me paste it in here. Control V to paste, exit grid view. So there's not a neat way to drag and drop rows in SharePoint list. You, can, you can't really move it. See, you can, I can select and I can't move it. And I'm sure there's several workarounds to do this. You can do power automate, you can do some kind of sorting, and I kind of would choose the sorting option. And in here, I'm just gonna create, create a custom sort column. I'm gonna add column text, click next, and I'll just call this custom sort. And you can see even adding this sort column and sorting in the list is not gonna solve it, but it will give you a option to do it and configure something else in power apps to do that for you. So in custom sorts, let's say for example, I'm gonna give this one, let me edit this in grid view first. So that's always gonna be the first one. Select, select, it's always gonna be the first one. So I'm gonna type one there. And then Tesla, I'm gonna give it a two. Uh, Tesla, Tesla select, Tesla model three, I'm gonna give it two A, this should be two B, and that one should be two C. And then select here for BMW, it will start with a three. This one's three A and three B. All right, exit grid view, and let's custom sort it so it all kind of sorts nicely. And you can see, even when we sort it here, it's not gonna fully work, but it's gonna give us an avenue to work on it later. So we sorted it here. Oh, this is wrong, so let me go and edit this again, edit in grid view. We want the S to show up, and I wanna call this Model S. Let me make that a little bit more in line with the other ones. Model S, and make this 2C, and make this one 2B. All right, exit grid view. 
and do my custom sort again. I think it automatically did that. You can see model three, S and X, that's kind of in a nice ascending order. If I go back to Power App Studio and click play, let's see if it picked it up. Tesla is the one I changed, click on that. You can see it picked it up, and you, but you can see that it didn't pick up the sort order. And I tried different ways to do this by adjusting the default orders when it shows up in SharePoint and refreshing it, but it didn't seem to work. And so one solution that I found was wrapping this particular function or the um, items in a sort by column command or function. So what I need to do is just type in sort by columns, sort by columns. And then, and I think I've clobbered that filters uh, function. So let's type, let's uh, go pre open parentheses, filter, let's bring that filter function back and go back over, go over here. Now we've got the sort by columns. What is my source? My source is gonna be this and what is going to be, no, let me go back here. What's gonna be the column that I am gonna sort by? Let's see if we picked it up. Uh, let's see, custom, I think I called it custom sort, but it didn't pick it up. So maybe we need to refresh. I'm gonna refresh the uh, connection first before I do this. Click on here and delete that. Go back here, go back, go back to my connections, click on the drop down here, click on refresh. So it's gonna pull in the column, hopefully close that. Oops, and bring back my trailer view, tree view. Click on that, go back to items here. I'm gonna backspace sort by columns. Open parentheses, go to the very end. And my source is that list or that filter and that combination filter function, comma. And let's see if it found the custom sort. And this it did, it found the custom sort. Click on that, close parentheses. Let's save this, click play. And let's hopefully it works, reset that. So it should have picked it up and custom sorted it. Let's go to Tesla. Now I can see it's in the proper order. Well, let's test it again and let's do something for BMW, all right? So we're gonna to go to edit and grid view. I'm gonna add BMW, a new, another one, and let's call this one X2. And for the X2 one, we're gonna put in the X2 website. Uh, let's go Control C to copy. I have it on a notepad, Control V to paste, uh, exit grid view. All right, and right now it shows up first because there's no number here. So I'm gonna give this the custom sort. I'm gonna give this a, I'm gonna change that to 3B. This should be a 3C. So let's go edit back in grid view. Go edit in grid view. This is going to be 3B. This one's gonna be 3C. All right, exit grid view. And the custom short should have showed it up. So we have 3A, 3B, 3C, X1, X2, X3. Let's go back to the Power App Studio and reset that. Um, hopefully it picked it up. Go to BMW and we have X1, X2, X3 and it sorted it correctly. So if I click on X2, it should take me to the X2 website, and there you go. So there's how you can create a cascading drop-down list, uh, and the source is going to be a SharePoint list, and also have it sorted in the way that you want it to. Thanks for watching. We hope this tutorial on Power Apps cascading drop-downs with SharePoint list hyperlinks has been helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for more tips and tricks. Leave your questions and feedback in the comments below. Thank you.